Ladies and gentlemen, welcome into my April election prediction. I do this every single month at the beginning of the month. I give the updated map what I think it's going to look like if the election were today. And it is April Fools. Maybe I'll throw something in here at the end for April Fools. But before we get started on the actual map, I mean, I could give the auto states, the auto locks if we want to, Washington, Oregon, California, all going to Biden, all of these dimple states I'm going to give to Biden as well. You could argue that New Hampshire, maybe we'll shade it a little bit lighter blue, but I still think Biden is taking it. You also do have Vermont as well going to Joe Biden, obviously also Illinois, New York, and Minnesota, we're going to leave alone for now. We'll give Trump his obvious states, North and South Dakota. You do have Nebraska. The one district in Nebraska is a slight lean towards Biden. So I'll probably just end up giving him that. Texas is not a swing state. Come on, guys. New Mexico, I'm going to give to Biden. You could maybe make it a lighter shade a little bit. Colorado, same thing. I'm giving it to Biden. Utah, obviously going to Trump. Iowa, obviously going to Trump, Minnesota, Arkansas, Louisiana, Mississippi, Alabama, Georgia, we're going to leave alone. South Carolina is going to Trump, Tennessee, Kentucky, Indiana, West Virginia, Florida, maybe shade it slightly lighter with Ohio, but those two states we would expect to go to Donald Trump. And then you do also have Virginia, which is kind of an interesting one, North Carolina, so I think these are the rest of the swing states at this point. When it comes to uh, Nebraska, I'm going to give Biden one of them and then Trump just the rest of the state overall there. I'm not going to make it overcomplicated when it comes to singular electoral votes, considering we are still months from the actual election. But this is probably the most obvious states. If you're a Democrat, you could argue, you know, well, Biden is going to take Minnesota. He's going to take Virginia as well you know, handily, and we'll have to look at the polls when it comes to that, but right now I would say this would be the guaranteed, I almost forgot, Alaska to Trump, Biden takes Hawaii, and this is kind of where we're looking right now, also Maine is a toss-up, it's another one that's split up, I'll probably end up giving Biden most of the votes, and then giving Trump one, so it's like 219 to 203, and then we will go to the true swing states. These are kind of the swing states, I would say, at this point when it comes to this election. Again, you could argue Minnesota's lean Biden, Virginia's lean Biden, and I would agree with you, but I'm just saying in the context of this, and really when it comes to the polls, I'm going to do kind of a rapid fire look at these where we're at right now. So on April 1st of 2016, Hillary Clinton was up by 10 points. <laughs> Jesus, man. I, I, at that point, Trump hadn't clinched, though. So it's important to note that Trump had not clinched. The Republicans were not rallying around Trump fully. There was still Ted Cruz. There was still Rubio. But Hillary up by 10. That's crazy. Biden in, on April 1st was up by 6. Trump now, in terms of just Trump-Biden, pure, you know, 1v1 matchup. Trump plus 1. A recent Fox News poll with Trump plus 5. You might say, well, Fox News is biased. Actually, Fox's polls normally, in terms of the general election, slightly overestimate Democrats. The Quinnipiac poll, not surprising, has Biden plus three. You've got a tie. You've got Trump plus one, Biden plus one. These numbers are very, very positive for Trump still, even though you could argue, well, you know, this is the margin right here. You could say he's slightly coming down a little bit. He was plus two. Now he's plus one. You know, to me, that's just ebbs and flows of the election. You're looking at a Trump lead in terms of the just general popular vote since before Thanksgiving, even honestly, since like early September, Trump's been leading, which is pretty crazy considering we would expect the Democrat to win the popular vote just the way things have gone in the America when it comes to these elections. Arizona, Trump up clearly. It's important to look at these recent polls, though. We're going to be getting more and more polls. The last one was mid-March, so very important updates coming, but Trump looking strong. Some of these polls down here, though, you do have to throw away. Like, polls from October, I really don't want to look at. I, I, we need to get more updated results. These three polls in March, though, plus four, plus four, plus five, all for Trump, very positive. Nevada, it is kind of similar, although it's a little bit more tighter than Arizona. Trump plus three. 
the two recent polls there, Trump plus two plus two. So still Nevada, certainly I would say a swing state. So is Arizona, but looks like Trump a little bit bigger of a lead. It's also important to look at the five way as well, because that's another thing that we're seeing where Trump is being helped by RFK Jr., Stein, and West. You can see Trump plus six, the two recent polls plus five plus six, more breathing room in terms of all of these people being on the ballot and the narrative that's going to be created is Trump will be helped by Kennedy and all the others. And that's why the Democrats are probably going to try and keep Kennedy off many of these swing state ballots. It's very interesting to look at. Wisconsin, I mean, we're seeing basically the same thing. This is a pure toss up looking at just Trump v. Biden. If you go to the five way, you can see Trump does enjoy a two and a half point lead in Wisconsin. You're looking at just Trump versus Biden. Trump sending plus three and a half. Recent poll has it as tied. Trump leading all the other ones. You go to a five-way. Trump up 2.8. So that, that one is a little bit more condensed. Now that's just polling error. It's polling margin. It's, you know, not surprised. This is Michigan. Uh, moving on to Pennsylvania. Very close. Basically a tie. If you go to the five-way, Trump enjoys plus two. A few recent polls that have Trump plus six and tied. North Carolina has been one that Trump is up, you know, nicely in. He won it in 2020. He won it in 2016. The five-way in North Carolina suggests a, a very comfortable Trump lead there as well. And then Georgia is very similar to North Carolina at this point. Every poll has Trump up by four or five at least. And then you expand it and include everyone. Trump goes up seven and a half. So both North Carolina and Georgia, two very key states for Trump. And he's doing very well in both of them. And it's important to include Kennedy, West, and Stein because they very likely will be on the ballot. Obviously, the Democrats are going to have to do their campaign against Kennedy and say, don't vote for him. You ha we have to keep Trump out of the office. If you vote for Kennedy, that's a vote for Trump. We know that's coming. But, you know, will that really deter people with how ba b bad Biden is in terms of approval rating? So you look at the recent polls, Georgia, I think right now is Republican, Trump plus five and just the, you know, head to head versus Biden. He extends his lead to plus seven when you include everyone. North Carolina, Trump won it in 2016 and 2020 when he had a, you know, a, a much higher unfavorability rating in comparison to both Biden and Hillary. Now Biden is more unpopular than Trump. So why would Trump lose North Carolina? He would win it by more and I would expect him to win it by more as well. When it comes to these Minnesota and Virginia, we're just not getting enough polls to, to really flip them for Trump at this point. And certainly, I would say Virginia, more of a lock right now for Biden. But Minnesota as well. We're going to have to get updated polls. I know there were a few polls that had Biden up three or up four. You know, let's get a five-way poll and see what's going on in Minnesota before we really flip it. When you look at these states out west, Arizona right now suggests a Trump lean. Nevada is a very slight Trump lean, very slight two and a half points. And then you're looking at the last three states at this point, Donald Trump at 268. So really, if this actually happens, all Trump would need to do is win one of these states, Pennsylvania, Michigan, and Wisconsin. And the way it looks right now, I would say Michigan would be a slight lean Trump. Pennsylvania is a pure talk. You could go really easy either way. Wisconsin, I'm going to say, is a slight lean for Trump. And then if you want to say, well, because of Philadelphia, Biden takes Pennsylvania, you've got Trump at around 293, Biden around 245. I think that's a very fair election prediction for this point. But if I really wanted to be honest about it because of how bad Biden's approval rating is and Trump getting propped up by Kennedy... West and Stein, you can give Trump Pennsylvania as well. And, and I think you're looking at 312 to 226, kind of a carbon copy of 2016 against Hillary as kind of a realistic election prediction. These three states, Pennsylvania, Michigan, Wisconsin, they're pure toss-ups. Pennsylvania right now is tied in the polls. Michigan is Trump slightly up, but we've seen some polls that are more positive for Biden recently. Wisconsin is Trump slightly up as well. And then you're looking at another pure swing state being Nevada. Georgia, I think they're going to say, oh, it's a pure swing state. Biden won it in 2020. Well, the, the polls just don't reflect that. Georgia right now is Trump plus five. I think Georgia is a conservative state in general. They were able to run up huge numbers with people that I really don't think care about politics 
with that crazy ballot harvesting maneuver. That's not going to happen again in 2024. You're not going to have that narrative where, oh, you have to vote from home because obviously the pandemic is in the rearview mirror. I don't think Georgia, but where is the motivation for voting for Biden? I just don't see it. So I think this is a very realistic right now for April 1st election prediction where I'm actually probably underestimating Trump. Uh, eh, Maybe not though, because I just don't see him winning Minnesota. I wonder if there is an actual Minnesota. The problem is there's, it doesn't seem like there's any Minnesota polls. Um, Like you take a look at Georgia. No, they, they don't have what I was looking for. Let's see the betting odds. I would imagine the betting odds have tightened a little bit. Yeah, the, the betting odds have come down a little bit. This is all very normal. This is all very healthy. Uh, Biden has his little surge. And and if this is really all it is, this is amazing news for Trump. You know, because Trump is still up in terms of the betting by around seven points, even with Biden, you know, having his little come up there. Really, it it has more so to do with, you know, Michelle Obama, Gavin Newsom going down. So it's elevating Biden because people are realizing that they're actually going with Biden and there's no way to install Gavin Newsom over Kamala Harris because of the obsession with race that the Democrats have. It's just not going to happen. It would be a terrible look in terms of optics. Now, we really haven't gotten many recent polls at least that I, like, like, let's just look at all the latest polls. You know, we're probably going to get some big updates. Like, the last poll was really on Thursday, so there were no polls over the weekend, I guess. You do have Trump plus five, the Fox News poll. You include everyone. It's still Trump plus five. That's slightly surprising. Normally, it helps, like like I was saying. Harris poll tied. That's a, that's a win for Trump. General election, Trump plus two. Quinnipiac, Biden plus three. That's another win for Trump. Quinnipiac is a very liberal pollster. So if they come out and say Biden's plus three in a general election scenario, that's that's good news for Trump. Remember, Quinnipiac had Biden like plus nine, plus 10 in, in October of 2020. Probably more, honestly. Quinnipiac is a, a very liberal pollster. Uh, but when it comes to these, yeah, I'm trying to see maybe a hypothetical. I know there were hypotheticals, Gavin Newsom versus Trump matchups. Or, or maybe like, uh, well, they're not doing those anymore. Yeah, they're probably not doing those anymore. But either way... That is the update. And then can we get Biden's approval rating, job approval, see how Biden's approval rating looks. It's still minus. Okay. So it's really not doing anything. Yeah. I was looking to see if it was going to improve and it looked like right around here, it was starting to come down, but you can see uh, the polls are very, very, you know, in the same ballpark in terms of this disapproval rating. It's been basically minus 14 to minus 16 for, I would say about half a year. For Biden, so that is a, a devastating approval rating, and they do have. Tr- There's no way Trump was at 47 percent approval on April 1st. Wow, Trump was right alongside Obama and Bush in terms of approval. Now, obviously, Trump's approval tanked because he shut down the economy, but that is interesting that Trump was actually at 47. I never thought Trump got to 47 percent in terms of approval rating. Uh, the other thing that's important when it comes to the most important, you know, topics of the election, people are saying economy is the third most important, immigration is the first. If Republicans can make this election about immigration, there's no way that Biden can win it. It's impossible. Biden is in a lose-lose in terms of immigration. If he plays hardball on it and says we're going to shut everything down, we're going to close the border, he's admitting that Trump was right. If he keeps everything open like it's been. It's a total clown show and you think like immigration. They're saying, oh, you're blowing it out, out out of proportion. I mean, I don't even know how Biden has an approval of 31 in terms of immigration. Well, I guess it, it's partisan politics. I guess you understand liberals saying they approve of what he's doing, but uh, that is pretty crazy. So right now, guys, I think there's a very realistic election map. It's around 312 to 226, give or take. I don't see Trump right now taking Minnesota or Virginia, but in a stomping it would be these two states that flip and that would get Trump. I mean, that would just be a, a total blowout in terms of that. And I really don't see Trump taking any other states outside of it. You could say, well, Colorado, uh, you know, New York, it's just not going to happen. That's the, the demographics in those states have not changed in, enough to suggest a true, true blowout, you know, to where you could get just a complete landslide victory. But either way, that's just the 
April update here for the 2024 election. Make sure you follow me on X. Link to that's always in the description.